Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is the weekly reading for the last couple days of February and the first week of March. I'm recording this Saturday night and <laughs> a few things. First of all, before I even talk about all of the astrology happenings of the week, I gotta say that I am like really, really, really feeling the effects of All Planets Direct. You know, that momentum has been building for a while and the momentum behind All Planets Direct is just gonna keep going and going and going. Uh, I think until the end of April, actually, when Pluto goes retrograde. So this momentum is going and going and going, getting faster and faster and faster. And wow, it, the the number and variety of energies hitting you, hitting everybody all the time right now is kind of getting, <laughs> I almost don't know what it's going to be like in another like month or so when it gets even faster and faster and faster, because it's like, on any given day, I feel like I can go through 10 different paradigms almost hour by hour as the day goes by. Everything is happening so fast and I'm getting completely random and bizarre messages from essentially everywhere. Like, I swear to God that my tomato was just talking to me, okay? And I don't normally communicate with tomatoes, but like, it's things like that. It's just getting weirder and weirder and I'm getting uh, like... You know, like I get inspired ideas and then I have to think, wait, is that for me or is that for somebody else? It's like these ideas are literally flying through the air and just bouncing off of people and hitting random people and everything goes all over the place. So, I mean, um, it can be a little hectic, a little overwhelming, a little chaotic. And I have actually been really practicing slowing down. Like, for example, uh, I just made a wrap for dinner and I, I forced myself, well, I didn't force myself, but I really kept reminding myself while I was making it to slow down, take a deep breath pay attention while I cut the tomato, you know, and then I was eating it and very carefully like observing every bite of the delicious food and the colors in the lettuce and tomato and cucumber and the salad dressing and all of that. Just observing all of the, the beauty around me and really making sure I slow down to do that because I feel like I could find, I'm finding myself rushing for no reason right now. <laughs> and I, I, it's not going to slow down. It's not going to slow down. So we want to be able to harness it as much as we can. Like ride it out like it's fun, right? Ride it out like this is a crazy water slide. Um, but also uh, knowing that, you know, I think a water slide is a really good analogy because you can actually stop yourself in the middle of a water slide, right? You can like put your hands out and put your legs out and stop yourself and the water can just rush around you. So you can have those moments where you become the center point and all of the energy just rushes right past you, just rushes, rushes, rushes around you. Like the, and you can be the eye of the hurricane while everything just revolves and rushes and blasts and blizzards around you. And you can find the beauty in the stillness at the center of it all while, while all of these energies essentially ripple around you and create your new reality, which leads me into my next point is that I feel that this is a fantastic period of time, like not like this week particular, but this goes on over the next coming weeks. Uh, to initiate any kind of paradigm shift for yourself. Like if you have been wanting to make any kind of massive change, and I mean like you could go huge right now. You could move across to the other side of the planet. You could entirely start a brand new career. You could go like between like meeting somebody and, you know, getting engaged in like a couple of weeks, which is something I did. So I know that might sound crazy, but I, I'm, I'm that person who's done that. So, <laughs> you know, it's like you, if you know, you know, right? It, it, this is the kind of thing. It's like, if you have a paradigm shift you want for yourself, and it can even be just in your own personal development, your own thought patterns, whatever it is going on with you, your spiritual upgrading, right? Massive paradigm shifts are possible. All you need to do is just feel what it feels like to be in the new paradigm, right? Feel what it feels like to be in your new paradigm. Choose your new paradigm and then just feel it and then it will be there because this energy is moving so fast. You can do anything, like anything can unfold for you faster than ever before because of this rushing, rushing of energies that's all happening all around you. So um, yeah, that, that's where I'm at just in terms of sensing the energy. Um, and it's like there's this leapfrogging effect. That's like, why am I recording this Saturday night? Typically, I have been recording them mostly Sunday morning, um, but I actually have to work tomorrow morning, Sunday morning. I have to work at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. Normally, I never work on Sundays. Why am I working on Sundays? I actually had to work at 5 a.m. on Friday, but I canceled my shift because I was like, I really didn't want to work. I wanted to have a really good Thursday night. I had plans, you know, stay at home with my husband and have date night. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to be getting up at 5 a.m. on Friday, right? So... I canceled my shift on Friday, even though I was like, ah, you know, I should probably just work for the money, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, nope, no, nope, I'm going to go for good vibes over money, right? And so what happens is that they email me and go, hey, can you work Sunday morning because we have extra work and we want it done by Monday. So essentially what happened is since I canceled my shift on Friday, 
and had myself an awesome, awesome Thursday night. Now I just get to work on Sunday when it's fine. I really don't care that that works for me. And I end up with the same amount of hours in my paycheck at the end of it. So that's a, that was a little like lesson for me in, um, you can have things your own way and it can still work out for everybody essentially. So in terms of the astrology, what is happening? We have of course, the Pisces new moon, <laughs> the Pisces new moon on the second. And that's on the same day as Mercury conjunct Saturn in Aquarius, right? Mercury conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. I write all the planets down with their symbols instead of the words because that's how I'm feeling with the Pisces energy is that linearizing things into like words, you know, like letter, linear letters, especially in English, you know, when we don't write in characters and we don't like write in, you know, like Korean, they group their letters into syllables. So like they actually kind of write, like a letter can be on top of the other one and grouped in with two other letters, you know, but English is so linearized, right? Right now I'm not feeling it. I'm really liking the pictures, <laughs> the symbols. So that's why I did that. Um, Mercury conjunct Saturn on the same day as the new moon. So... <laughs> That's going to be one of those days where, ah, uh, you know what? Oh, I want, I want cards on that. I want cards on that, specifically that. I'm going to go through this drawing cards on the astrological moments because that is a very different type of vibe, isn't it? To have the Pisces new moon so beautiful, so watery, so open and transcendent on the same day as Mercury conjunct Saturn, which are in Aquarius. So that brings in that mental activity, that intellectual vibe, and also Saturn trying to get you to take accountability for something, right? As we heard a bunch about last month. So three of wands, that's getting your return on your investment and looking towards the future. Ace of wands, the power to manifest whatever you want and <laughs> align with your new future. And the, there's the five of <laughs> the five of um five of wands. What am I trying to say? Okay, so three wands, three wands um, for this new moon, and I think that is coming from the Mercury and the Saturn energy. So this new moon has two sides to it, two entirely different sides because of the influence of Mercury and Saturn, and. Create whatever you desire. Wrap your power around yourself. Focus on weaving your inner light around you like, like a cocoon, like a web of light, like a, an interface of light, like a buffer layer of light around you. Wrap it around you to hold yourself apart from the conflict energy. Really, it's not really conflict energy. It's contrast energy. It's contrast energy that's happening around you, right? This five of wands indicating that, yeah, there's going to be some of this, hey, take accountability for your actions type of energy. There's going to be some of this um, r racing thoughts with the Mercury going on, right? Mercury conjunct Saturn. This is Saturn teaching your mind to take accountability. And this is going to be wrapping up these things that we have, that we talked a lot about during Aquarius season. Okay. So whatever was going on for you last month, right? That's coming back around for one last kind of release. And it's really beautiful. You can like basically flush all of that stuff down the, down the toilet because the Pisces new moon is this watery vortex where anything can be flushed away. It can all wash away. So, the final, wow, I didn't expect this to, I thought, I, I said the final one last time when we had the final um, Mercury-Pluto conjunction, right? I was like, okay, now we're done with this, but this is like one more time, one more time. So I don't really anticipate this Five of Wands energy, this contrast energy, contrast, not conflict, right? Contrast, not conflict. The contrast energy to be really fading away for most of us, um, especially if you just focus on whatever's going on with you, focus on whatever's going on with you, focus on what makes you feel good. This is like the complete wrapping up of all of the things I've been saying, essentially since I've been doing these weekly readings for the last couple of months, right? Um, focus on you, do what makes you feel good and hold yourself apart if, if you desire, hold yourself apart if you desire from the conflicting energies that are happening around you. Then what else we got going on? Okay, so on the third, <laughs> the 
So Venus and Mars are essentially conjunct all week. And for next week, they're staying very close together for quite a while now. And um, on the third, so the day after the new moon, so this is all happening very close together. It's bam, bam, bam. So we're going to be feeling this Mars conjunct Venus conjunct Pluto energy at the same time as the new moon. So this is like so much, so much, so much. <laughs> Mars and, sorry, Mars and Venus are conjunct together, piling on top of Pluto. Okay, let's get cards on that because, I mean, I'm sure you can feel as soon as we have a Pluto conjunction, we know that it's about the transformation of masculine and feminine, right? It, it, <laughs> to have all three of these piling up together is very interesting because Mars and Venus get together and it's obviously the union of masculine and feminine, right? And then they are together jumping through this scorpionic portal of Pluto and going through some kind of transformation. So masculine and feminine already in a state of unity going through a era of transformation is actually what I just heard in my head, era. That that seems like rather a rather large scale word, <laughs> but that's the one that came up, I would in fact be extremely interested. When was the last time Mars and Venus were conjunct Pluto together? Like when was the last time these three planets had a dog pile all together? I have no idea. I mean, some astrologer would know. I guess I could look it up. I didn't think to look it up before now. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so death, right? <laughs> we're talking about a Pluto conjunction and the death card pops out. There you go, it's transformation, it's transformation. I notice how we have this this it, this is it looks like a black sun right but it, to me that looks like a new moon what's that song black hole sun sound garden black hole sun <laughs> um this to me this is like new moon energy eclipse energy right so we're going through that portal um so your masculine and feminine this could be playing out i mean it is going to play out on so many different levels your masculine and feminine <laughs> your masculine and feminine energies inside of yourself going through some kind of melding and transformation, almost like coming out the other side as a newly unified force. So anyone who has been working on balancing their masculine and feminine or working on their solar plexus and sacral chakras, this is like so going to be so um, landmark for that, right? This is a massive possibility for unity. And I, I'm just thinking about a, a show I just watched the other day where, you know, two lovers, a man and a woman, um, a, a portal opened up in front of them and they grasped each other's hands and says, we don't know where this portal goes. Are we ready for this? Are we going to jump in this portal together? And they hold, they grab each other's hands and go, we're not ready, but when has that ever stopped us? Right? So they just go, okay, as long as I'm with you, we're going to hold hands and jump to this portal. We don't know where it's going to go, but we're going to go together. As this is that kind of energy. And then they end up in a completely new paradigm on the other side. Seven of cups. Okay. So, oh no, that's not seven of cups. That's the nine of cups. Even better guys, <laughs> even better. Nine of cups. This is all of the different energy flying around you. Everything is flying so fast, right? It's like this tentacle monster is offering you nine different cups. But here's the thing. Do you actually need to choose? Uh, if this was the seven of cups, I would say choose your, choose your cup, right? But with the nine of cups, look, she has them all. She has them all. Maybe the tentacle monster isn't offering you the cups. Maybe you are the tentacle monster with nine arms holding nine cups, right? You can have it all. You can have it all. You can have your, your like hands in nine different things, right? You could be really, really, really <sighs> oh, how, to, how, to, how to describe, um, really tuning into your inner multidimensionality, your inner multidimensionality in terms of how many different sub personalities do you have running around inside of you, right? Your masculine and feminine halves, your solar and lunar halves, all of your different parts. How do they all work together? How do they all add up to something greater? And what is the sum of all of these parts? You can look at all of your microcosmic parts and going, I have all of these different aspects of myself, right? And, but then also how do they blend together? What is the thing that connects them all, right? Nine arms. And I imagine that she's probably like an octopus and, you know, you know, octopuses have, um, brains like a part of their brain they have a little bit of brain in every arm so that that's how they can be so dexterous right so she would have a little bit of her consciousness in every single one of these tentacles and but really it all flows back to the one to the one consciousness in the center so i think when all of your parts get together and jump through the scorpionic plutonian portal they come out 
being newly blended, newly fused, newly fused. This is like really deep levels of alchemy. And what is that phrase? The Hieros Gamos template? Is that how you pronounce it? Hieros Gamos? Like the divine union of masculine and feminine on this much higher level. It's been a while since I read up on that, but tossing that out there, somebody might be reading up on that. And the three of cups. <laughs> That's the three, right? You got Mars, Venus, and Pluto coming together, coming together. And pl but Pluto is this third, this third force, this third force. I'm just looking at the, the art on this particular one. One of these people is a tentacle monster. <laughs> you have, in fact. I'm going to interpret this as masculine, feminine, and tentacle monster. Very interesting. And I'm just hearing, I'm just noticing that I'm talking about tentacle monster. And it's funny because that was a metaphor I think I used back in Aquarius season when we were working through our Aquarian based uh, fears of unity, right? And like, like I said, that might have one last activation in order to be released, like flushed away through the portal of this new moon. Very interesting. It's like this entire week is this massive portal moment because the Pisces new moon is like a huge, huge, huge portal, I would say, like for the whole year, right? The Pisces new moon is important. Um, and if you have any significant P Pisces place, I mean, all Pisces placements are significant, but you know, some of you might have um, one of the outer planets in Neptune or something, right? If you have like Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, or Mercury, or your north node or your south node in or sun and moon in Pisces especially if it's near the degree of the new moon and I think the degree of the new moon is I think it's around like six degrees or something if so if you have any planets in the early placements of Pisces this is going to really activate those and it's not the only thing going on. Um, it's not the only part of this portal, right? So we have the new moon forming this portal. We have Venus and Mars and Pluto forming a portal. And then we have the sun conjunct Jupiter <laughs> on the fifth. So two, three, five, right? This is all happening within the span of a couple of days. I really feel like, you know, over the course of the week, this is building together to be one massive portal of transcendence if you allow it to be right if you allow it to be if you can tune into the higher frequencies of this this week this could be propelling you into like literally anything you can dream up um neptune is also hanging out in pisces still you know for like for so many for so long for so many years right so this is like tap into the power of your dreams if you can dream it, you can live it. Like, especially this week, you can walk through the portal, right? And it's like at the end of the week, if you find that, oh, you know, nothing actually shifted this week. No, it did. Okay, I promise you that if you make intentions, like if you set intentions to shift something this week, to flow into a new paradigm this week, to be a new version of yourself this week, if you don't see instant results by the end of the week, it's like, don't, don't worry about that because it's not about the physical manifestation. This week is not about the physical manifestation of anything. It's about the energetic and emotional and mental transformation of everything that will put you in a alignment with whatever it is that you're manifesting. It's like by the end of the week, you will have done the energy work. You will have done the emotional work. You will have done the mental work. And this could be coming at you like just crazy, crazy, crazy darts flying at you all week. Just tons of stuff happening. Just keep rolling with it. Just stay open. Just keep rolling with it. And remember to slow down and take your deep breaths and be the eye of the hurricane. You don't even need to be in the eye of the hurricane. Be, be the eye of the hurricane while all of this stuff happens around you because, um, and then, you know, this all closes out with Jupiter or the sun conjunct Jupiter, which is <laughs> massive expansion to your solar plexus, massive expansion to your sense of self. Um, I mean, so the sun conjuncts Jupiter every year, right? The sun does everything once a year. <laughs> so um, I feel like I could possibly run the risk of over-exaggerating how important this is. But at the same time, it's like there's no way to over-exaggerate how important a sun conjunct Jupiter is. It is so beautiful. It is so expansive, especially for anybody who feels disempowered, right? If you're trying to or anybody who's trying to make a big shift in their life, if you want to go big, this is when you go big, right? Your, your solar energy, the, like our solar energy, which is connected to your solar plexus, is going to be conjunct Jupiter for this massive, massive expansion. Okay, and all this time I've been hanging on to the Eight of Wands, which is rapid rapid, rapid, rapid downloads, activations, and changes, and energy flowing and moving, and fast, fast, fast. So, yeah, you know, that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Um, let's get, what deck is that? I, I grabbed the Starseed Oracle, but they're like, no, not that one. 
Um, and that can be happening a lot, by the way, selecting something and then going, oh, I don't know if that was right. And then selecting something and go, oh, I don't know if that was right. So if you're uncertain about what to do, or if you keep feeling like you're making mistakes, that is, that is only a reflection of how fast the energy is going right now. So no, no feeling to no, have, have no judgments about that, right? Even have no feelings about that. Just keep rolling with it. Just keep moving forward. This is all about your forward momentum. What happened two seconds ago is completely irrelevant to your forward momentum. You just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Okay. I need to get an Oracle deck, but I don't know what one. Oh, it's in the, it's in a different room. That's why. And it is your sacred destiny. That's what we are all like riding a train flying towards right now. <laughs> I, I, like I'm starting to feel like there's almost no end to the number of breakthroughs that I can experience in a day. It, it's like, I'll be sitting there feeling one type of way, feeling good, you know, feeling tranquil, eating my breakfast, drinking my coffee, doing my thing, feeling really good. And then something could out of the blue, it's almost like an energy dart. It feels like this like bizarre energy will hit me all of a sudden. And then I will spend half an hour being really, like worked up about something or maybe I get emotional about something and I need to like talk it out or I need to release it or whatever. But then it, then it leaves really fast and then I shift back and then I'm onto like euphoria. And then it's, it's, a I have been quite, uh, all over the place, but it feels like it, it all has this forward momentum and it is all leading up to, Oh, you know, I'm starting, as I'm talking about this, I'm starting to understand it. So it's like we've been revisiting all of these different areas of our lives. We've been gathering all of our parts together, right? You've been making, it's like um, before you move, right? Before you move you, and you're doing your packing, you do this big review of all of your possessions and some of them you go, oh, I don't need to take that with me. You throw it out, you throw it out, you throw it out, you throw it out, right? And other stuff you give away and then other stuff you go, oh yeah, and no, I'm going to, I'm going to pack this with me. And then you kind of end up doing this weird inventory of all of your all of your items when you're packing it up in order to move and but that's just part of the process that's actually what we've been doing we've been doing energetic inventory on ourselves energetic inventory on ourselves and it's because things are really really now picking up and i know it was like a pretty slow start to the year but it's like the new year is finally starting to kick in okay the new year is finally starting to kick in we're doing the energetic inventory um and then <laughs> it feels like next week is going to be an entirely like an entirely new situation, an entirely an entirely new energetic situation. It's going to be an entirely new energetic landscape. You will notice this inside of yourself by next week. By next week, it's going to be this whole new refreshed state because you will have done the inventory. You'll be done with doing inventory. No more doing inventory. You'll have tossed out what you want to toss out. You will have packed up what you want to pack up and everything will be together. And then you will have gone through the portal. This this whole week, I, I in my mind, I am seeing this whole week as a portal. New moon. Mercury conjunct Saturn, Mars and Venus and Pluto conjunction, Sun conjunct Jupiter, and at the end, very end of the week, um, Mars and Venus together hold hands <laughs> and move into Aquarius, right? Mars and Venus are forming a partnership and holding hands, just like I was describing earlier, and moving on into their new world of Aquarius. And it will, you will, you will notice a shift out of, um, out of that Capricorn energy, right? The lingering Capricorn energy, because Mars and Venus have been in Capricorn still moving into Aquarius on the fifth. So especially anybody who, um, I mean, I haven't, I don't mind that at all, right? Like, cause I'm, I'm pretty cool with Capricorn energy because of my Capricorn stellium, but I know some people have been really feeling the Capricorn like energy, like a little more like dense. It's been more dense for them. So anybody who uh, has had challenges that are related to Capricorn energy, they're, they're, they're going to fade like by next week, because by next week, Mars and Venus are moving into Aquarius and that's an entirely separate thing. So we'll talk about that next week, but yeah. What is the card here? <laughs> Gateway. <laughs> have you, is it just me or like, are the cards getting even more synchronous than usual? I have been noticing this. Uh, you just, <laughs> the synchronicities are getting out of control guys and when I say that I mean it's getting weird like super super weird because my entire life is this like synchronistic just blizzard all the time like I fully expect to wake up in the morning and be bombarded with synchronicities all day and I entirely expect for like tarot cards to reflect whatever whatever I'm feeling right but sometimes it's it's like uh, I've been noticing 
actually a lot that I have been talking and then drawing cards and then the cards are just confirming what I'm saying, which is which is kind of cool. But it seems to be happening like more and more and more. And the synchronicities that I'm witnessing like in my physical material reality are starting to happen like really fast, like so fast. Like I could think something and then it, it happens. It's like <laughs> getting really crazy, just like this, right? Gateway, gateway. And this is a unicorn, guys. We got unicorns. We got unicorns in the house. I have been waiting to have an experience with a unicorn. They are one type of consciousness that has not really come through for me at all yet, but maybe that will change this week. Wouldn't that be cool if we could get unicorns? <laughs> Let's, uh, I haven't, I, this, I've had this deck for a couple of weeks and I haven't drawn this card yet. So I'm actually going to read out of the book. That'll be a good way to kind of close this off. If I can find it. Do I know the alphabet? Does Shy know the alphabet? There we go. <laughs> Enchanted Valley. There are places on the planet where the veil between the physical realms and the mystical dimensions is especially thin. These places are called portals, vortexes, or spiritual gateways in mythology. They are revered as places where things beyond ordinary reality can occur. Mystics, visionaries, and shamans can traverse this realm and the next through these places. In Celtic traditions, the wee folk, fairies and elves, easily move through these portals and have access to these magical places. The enchanted valley is the place where these portals often appear. The sacred landscape wants you to know. Magic is afoot. Wondrous events are unfolding. Profound revelations and inner illuminations are close at hand. It is now much easier to manifest your dreams. This is an excellent time to take action on your visions for your future. A small amount of action now will generate much bigger results. Gateways to spirit are opening, and these are places where the veil is especially thin. Fairies and elves are supporting you. Wonders are blossoming in your life. Watch for them. Open your heart to hollowed, holy, magical energy. The more you become aware of the small marvels in your life, the more they will grow in magnitude. Ta! Who's excited? I'm excited for this week, guys. I feel like it is completely magical, like anything can happen. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's the vibe. I'm just going to hold that vibe all week. That is my intention for the rest of this week. I mean, for the whole week, right? <laughs> I am just going to exist in this magical fairy unicorn feeling and just experience it all. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.